Hello, hello folks, this is James Qualk from Circuit uh, Solutions and Repair LLC. Um, and I am repairing another Tajima embroidery machine uh, power supply. Um, we had a client that saw the, uh, the video that I had posted of um, the other repair that I had done. Um, and our last repair that we did on one of these was basically we re repaired this damage to, the, um, to this PCB right here. On the previous PCB, um, the resistor bank had failed and it caused the uh, PCB to burn so we had to cut that entire subsection of the board out, put in a donor material, and then actually go in and, and uh, you know, put on new traces, new eyelets, and so on. Um, somebody had tried repairing this PCB um, and they did it incorrectly. First of all, they didn't have the proper tools, the proper technique, um, or the proper equipment, or even the know-how. Um, and one thing I should point out is, is when you're repairing a PCB, it is very easy to quickly get in over your head. Um, you start out by, by applying too much heat. Um, you don't have a soldering iron with the a high enough thermal mass. Um, and so you keep cranking the uh, temperature up, or maybe it just, maybe you've got a, a cheap, you know, plug in a, a, you know, just single 120 volt, uh, you know, um, soldering iron and you're putting it on these big fat joints and you're trying to trying to desolder that uh, connection and you end up what you end up doing is you end up you know insufficiently uh liquefying the uh, solder it's not completely melted through and then you basically tear off a pad where you tear out the entire plated through hole now this you know pardon my french but this this blithering idiot that uh, tried doing this literally tore a bunch of uh, pads and plated through holes out of the uh, board. Um, I have been spending the last few days replacing about 20 plated through holes. Can you believe it? 20 plated through holes because some idiot didn't know what they were doing and they didn't know when to quit and give this to somebody else who knew what they were doing. Um, and so it, it's created a lot of the uh, extra work that we've had to do. We've had to mill down several layers into the uh, PCB you can see on this plated through here hole here, uh, this plated through hole was damaged, so I went in and I milled down into the second layer. I put in a, uh, a funnelette. It's hard to see with my cell phone here, but we put in a new eye eyelet. Um, we soldered it in, and then basically we did the same thing here and here. And you can see that we've already filled these in with epoxy. We did that over here, and over here, and over here too. So we filled those in with epoxy now that the connections have been remade. Uh, we tried to color match it as best as we can. We're going to end up doing the same thing here. We have to put a new eyelet in here. <laughs> uh, we have to put another eyelet in there. I still have, um, I believe, an eyelet right here that I have to put in. An eyelet here. And an eyelet over here. Um... I mean, the guy just created massive damage to this PCB. Uh, he also tore these two pads off completely. So as you can see, we actually uh, stamped new pads onto the uh, PCB. We drilled uh, new holes. Um, and then we put new eyelets in. And basically the way that this works is if you're going to put in a new eyelet, what we have to do actually is we have to expand the hole. Now we've made sure that we're not going to run into any traces in this area. We know that we've got plenty of room here, so we've we basically chosen an eyelet which is slightly bigger um, than the current diameter. And as such, we have to take a, a carbide uh, mill. We run it at a few thousand RPM, and we basically are just going to go in. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in and basically mill this out. And you can see that we've basically created some new, uh, some new uh, or larger uh, holes there, which then basically we can go in and we can put some different eyelets in. So we're going to actually put these eyelets in, and they just basically fit right in the hole. We'll swage them in using a proper uh, setting tool, um, and then we'll resolder the uh, connections, and then we'll clean everything up, and then we'll get. And then the board will basically be ready um, 
we're forced to put all the new uh, capacitors back in. But I mean, you can even see, I mean, this is, this is how ridiculous the repair was um, that this guy had previously done. You can see the capacitor, uh, the capacitor, uh, you know, outlines here to give you an idea as to how big these should be. I found these right here, just basically stuck inside, <laughs> inside, um, and then they were flapping in the breeze because they were at least a good half inch to three quarters of an inch off the circuit board. Um, it was just unreal. And then you can see, it's hard to see it here, but this guy also tore the, uh, the connection on top here. So now before you can even repair that, I have to go in, I've got to remove these inductors here. So I have enough room to, to basically stamp a new pad on here. Um, and then we have to drill it out. Um, and then we can go ahead and, and solder that and put a, a new eyelet in. And then we'll be we'll be ready uh, to go ahead and, and put that back, put the capacitors back on. But yeah, the guy did a lot of, uh, lot of damage. So I have had my work cut out for me.